grace and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. In 1621, William Bradford, the pilgrim governor of Plymouth, Massachusetts, gave the first Thanksgiving proclamation, inviting the pilgrims to give thanks for surviving the harsh New England winter and celebrating a good harvest. Render thanksgiving to ye almighty God, he wrote, for all his blessings. Earlier that winter, the pilgrims lost 45 of their 102 colonists. In 1863, Abraham Lincoln reinstituted the presidential uh, Thanksgiving proclamation in the middle of the Civil War, asking for people both to offer thanks to God for all his benefits, but also national penance in the midst of such a terrible conflict that had taken so many of the countrymen. In 1942, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, in the midst of the Second World War, quoted the 23rd Psalm in which God is shown as a shepherd, leading us through the valley of the shadow of death and recognizing the goodness and mercy that follows us all the days of our life. In spite of these desperate circumstances, each of these chose to thank God for his abundance. How do you view life? Is it through the lens of abundance or the lens of scarcity? 20th century French philosopher Jean Bossard in his book, The Critique of Dialectical Reason, posits that it is scarcity that is the overriding rule of life, the lens by which most people view the world and their existence. Scarcity thinking deprives people of the ability to be able to make choices that might be available to them, <coughs> thus diminishing, Jean Paul says, their freedom and their humanity. The lens of scarcity is the glass half empty. It's lamenting about what we don't have. In this, we see risk as something to be avoided or something that's just downright bad. And we create for ourselves these comfort zones. And we get stuck in them. There's not enough of anything. and We're not willing to go beyond the comfort zones for possibilities. In scarcity thinking, we see resources that are limited. Time, money, opportunities. And like with a clenched fist, we try to hold on to whatever we, whatever we have. We hold back instead of sharing. We live in our fears because we're afraid we might lose something. But even before, there's even the opportunity to lose. Possibilities are dead on arrival. Living in our fears is a terrible way to live. By contrast, the lens of abundance sees the glass half full. We see greater possibilities. We still have our comfort zones, but the walls are permeable. We can kind of go in and out as we need to, looking for possibilities. There's a sense of abundance, that there's plenty to go around and that there always will be. Abundance is like love. You always have more to give. You always have more to share. One lives a life of generosity with open hands and open hearts to provide for the needs of others. And we are alive to faith. We experience greater happiness. There are blessings to go around. And we build a trust in God who promises to provide us with everything that we might need. Abundant living overflows with gratitude and generosity. The word gratitude comes from the Latin gratia, which literally means grace. In other words, everything that you and I experience, everything that we have, are the resources, our families, our friends, come to us as pure and utter gift. 
We recognize that there is something greater at work in our life. Gratitude and generosity connects us deeper in a living, loving relationship with God. The scripture bears witness to this. And it happens right in the very beginning when God is creating the heavens and the earth. He's making life out of nothing. That is abundant life. And we heard the story of the widow and the child who are destitute, destitute and getting ready to have their last meal, getting ready to die. And yet they enter into a relationship with Elijah the prophet. And there they are blessed by trusting him and his God. Of course, we know about the feeding of the 5,000, where whole communities are fed with two fish and five loaves. In the gospel, a widow putting everything she has as a holy offering to God. And the very life of Jesus is the ultimate example of abundant living through his life, death, and resurrection, a sacrifice so that the whole world might know God and might live. And yet God knows how quickly we can forget, how quickly we can let scarcity scare us. Remember how I brought you out of slavery, a phrase that we hear in the Old Testament over and over and over again. Or Jesus, do this in remembrance of me. The word remember and its variations are used over 240 times in the Bible. You and I, as people of God, are to remember. Remember God's grace. Remember his mercy. Remember his forgiveness and his love and the purpose that he gives each and every one of us. We are to remember, especially when things go bad. Remember when things seem desperate. Remember when resources seem limited. Our God is doing wonderful things in and through this ministry that you and I share. The people of God are offering their time. They're going into the city to tutor kids, going into prisons to share the word of God, engage in all sorts of community outreach and missions that are touching people all around the world. The people of God are offering their talents through using their musical gifts or their, their voices or their technical know-how or, or teaching children and adults. And the people of God are offering their treasures, supporting this congregation and this budget that we have of $1.5 million. But it's more than just money. Our budget represents as a, as a roadmap for the things that are important to us more than money. It's people. It's pastors. Formation leaders. Musicians. Property and finance caretakers. The support of our volunteers and leaders in the mission. And yet if we're honest with ourselves, we recognize that our income has plateaued over the last nine years. This at the same time that expenses and costs of living have risen. And as we get to this end of this year and look forward to next year, we recognize that they're filled with all sorts of challenges. But I believe that the biggest challenge that we face as a congregation will be what lens will we view life and ministry? Will it be a lens of scarcity or a lens of abundance? What lens will we put on and what will be our response? I hope and pray that it will be a lens of abundance where we will see options and opportunities when facing challenges and obstacles. Do we believe that God is big enough to handle all of our problems and challenges through us? And so I challenge you to live a life of abundance. Cultivate your pa passions and purpose Live it, share it, make a difference. I invite you to grow. Pay attention to your spiritual formation as you worship, as you connect with other disciples. Listen to the sermons, pray, meditate, study. Engage in spiritual conversation with the brothers and sisters that are all around you. 
my challenge to live a life of gratitude and generosity for all that God has done for you through the person of Jesus Christ. Live abundantly. I choose to believe that the church is the hope for the world. And that God wants us to dream worthy dreams for our congregation as the Spirit leads us. And I pray that we will all view life and ministry through the lens of abundance rather than scarcity as we practice gratitude and generosity. I believe it will be you and me, the hands and feet of God in this world, who will accomplish his purposes. God invites each one of us to deeper trust and faith. And as we put the resources in God's hands, we will see what he can do with them. With Jesus, we will not fail. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.